What's going on, everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Split Screen D&D, the place where we're attacking all things Dungeons & Dragons from both sides of the screen. My name's Tom Quinn, resident Dungeon Master here at Modern Myth. And I'm Josh Winans, resident player character here at Modern Myth. Well, so... Well. You know, I was just having this thought the other day with the culture and of, of D&D and the, and the 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 amazing uh, growth it's experienced thanks to, to uh, the live streams and... We as a, as a, the five e tables have really started to embrace the 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 drama, the the bringing in of the 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 thespian uh, qualities of of engagement and and all this one and, th- and there are, it's fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But I I feel like we're getting to a point now where we're all trying to tell the most epic story that's ever told, and in the process of trying to do that, we kind of forget. Oh yeah, this is a this is a game. And this, we're supposed to be having fun. So I think it'd be fun to talk about humor and its implications and role at the table. Beautiful, beautiful. Before we dive into that, uh, I'm not even gonna say it. You guys are crushing it. You know what to do. Uh, if you've ever been on YouTube, you know precisely <laughs> what to do. If this is your first time on YouTube, uh, where have you been? Check out one other video and you'll get the whole lowdown. <laughs> um, no, you guys have been crushing it. Um, yeah. Keep on crushing it. There we we hugely appreciate it. All right. um, humor, levity at the table, mm-hmm. huge, uh, huge. And can I say one thing? Because I don't want to no. forget. No, no, go, Damn. go. No, just kidding. Uh, I actually don't think you can tell the most epic story ever told without a proper balance. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean 50-50. That doesn't mean, you know, I mean, you could have a campaign that's 75-25 humor. Yeah. You can have a campaign that's 75-25. But I really do think that uh, any, I mean, any great story, and you can mm-hmm. have, I mean, you know, stories that are quite tragic, like in the Shakespearean sense of the word, tragedies. Oh, but they have the fools and all that. That, and, yeah. that have plenty of... of humor strewn throughout yeah absolutely it, it's just um it's it, it really is those the the play between uh tension and mm-hmm. the catharsis of levity mm-hmm. really is such a driving force yeah. both, I mean, for, for so many aspects i mean and, and when man when you're getting it like when you're nailing it and it, man, it is, it's, I think some of the best stuff that happens at the yeah. table. Well, it's, it's nuts because when you have that balance, right. Mm-hmm. And, and this is, this is exactly what I mean by balance. You can have a, a session that goes all the way across that the tone is, I mean, it is tense from the moment you you start, people are on the edge of their seat mm-hmm. all the way to the end and people go like, holy crap. Mm-hmm. You can have an, uh, an entire, uh, session. That's the opposite. It's literally, opens up you guys are blowing off some steam Mm -hmm. because it's much needed coming off of that last crazy session that you know it doesn't the balance doesn't always have to exist within a single session or within sometimes it's you know this session is very tense and this session has but it's that that give and take um and i don't always think that those are the easiest waters to navigate because you're talking about four, five, six, ten people sitting around a table Mm -hmm. all contributing to what is taking place. Mm -hmm. And there's no there's no real conductor. I mean I I don't I don't know that I think of the DM as as a uh, a conductor in that regard. I'm not here to tell players, you know, when they should be funny at the table and when they shouldn't. Well no I I I have control over the NPCs and so I may have an eye towards like Man, it has been a tense few sessions. Like they're they're coming up on this little tavern. Like maybe they need some uh, some just some light hearted folk, uh, right, you right. know, here to 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 ease that off. But uh, so so I, I I do think for wow. everyone, yeah, there's a lot to cover here, and yeah, I, yeah, I think this is a great it's, one to talk about because, like you're saying, it's both sides of the table, and it's really uh, from the uh, the player character side. Like humor, like some people are have that it comes naturally. Like yeah. they're they're just able to find the humor in things. The yeah, they're really good at the one liners. They're really good at the uh, whatever style of humor yeah, that they're they, quippy they're, and something. And quip, yeah, they're yeah. just really good at it, and that's awesome. And there's some people who are, are not. They're more geared. They, they're thinking like I uh, ten steps ahead about like I want my character to grow like this and all this wonderful stuff. And there's nothing wrong. Like it's not all of a sudden you need to start like you're so you know 
why so serious? You know, we're talking about that. Like, why not? Uh, you can embrace that. But I think what's cool is those characters who are that way, when they do show just the tiniest bit of levity, it just echoes that much yeah. more. It also says a ton about I mean, some sometimes a character that has been... Uh, and, and this goes in both directions. A character that you might call fundamentally a serious character or fundamentally a a, a goofy character. And mm-hmm. I, by goofy, I don't mean... Well, just a, a character who imparts more levity into the game than they do okay. seriousness. Yep. It's oftentimes when they are breaking that mold that mm-hmm. we really learn something about about the character, you know, and whether it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I'll reference Kel from our campaign. Yeah. Kind of who, who really as a character is kind of a, a hard nose, you know, ex soldier or, or form, uh, former soldier, you know, all, all this. But in, in, in many regards, I would say as, as PCs go, there, there's a lot of times that, that even though you are that, you're definitely that, you also, serve a, a certain amount of balance just within your character. And I think it's a lot of the times where when when that levity is showing, and I mean, like, a, a lot of that ends up playing out around, like, your obsession with your food and your cooking and all, all right, those aspects. Or my six intelligence. That's, well, it, well, certainly your intelligence <laughs> uh, play, plays in certain ways. But but I think we, you know, we learn the, the times... I think levity has a, ten, a a tendency to soften a character a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can be stone jawed and 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 sometimes that's exactly what you want your tank right. and your healer or your your paladin to to be. But there's, we would never learn anything about a character that's that stoic right. and that stony and that you know it's those it's the cracks where a little levity leaks mm-hmm. out that we get a sense of what's underneath that. Yeah, and, and conversely with the with characters that are that are very comical when they have those moments where you know they're taking something seriously Mm -hmm. it really helps to illuminate what their values are Mm -hmm. and what they're what's actually important to them yeah no it's 100 percent. and uh i was just thinking like for those of people who are like well i'm i am a serious character all the time like that's my my niche for uh you chose to go the the emo lone wolf guy or girl for some reason um I would say like, hey, well, look, if you want to go in for realism or, or, or uh, you know, that that uh, goal, look at people who do go th- like because D&D, again, you are going through horrible experiences, you life and death. Look at people who go th- look at soldiers. Right. Yeah. When they're in, when they are needing to do business, they are doing business. But when they're not, when they're off the front lines, I mean, holy they, they cow, know how to cut loose, they know how to cut loose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if you <laughs> Oh, Marines, man. Woo! But, uh, like, you know how to cut loose. And um, I've lost my train of thought uh, going off of weird uh, memories. But um, they also have, like, a, a gallows humor, for lack of a better word, yeah. that uh, they need in their profession to keep them going, to keep right. them go- uh, alive almost in yeah. a way. Well, and I'm, I'm glad you br- specifically brought up gallows humor because I think it so perfectly encapsulates... If something qualifies as gallows humor, it means humor was needed. Mm-hmm. It means things are have gotten so bad that we curl up into the fetal position or we make the situation lighter mm-hmm. because it's too heavy right now. Right. Like we aren't gonna make this. That's it. You know? it kind of is your two options. Like, do you like let the full reality of what's happening hit you and then you are a crumpled mess, or do you like laugh it off and be like, oh, I'm gonna have PTSD in 10 years and I'm gonna have to deal <laughs> with this at that point? That yeah. kind of idea, yeah, yeah, and I think I I think that that uh, a a character and and like I said, I actually I don't think that there's anything wrong with you know like I said a character. I mean, you could go ninety five. I mean, you could you have a character that is very serious the vast majority of the time, and a character that is very comedic the vast majority of the time. But but like I said, that's it. Really, there it's in those moments where right. that th- they they. They take the mantle off, right? You know, and and whether that comes to reveal that this, you know, comedic kind of joking character, uh, you know, it's it's like the old uh, what's the old joke about the the clown who's depressed and he, oh, he goes to the, yeah. and 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 they keep telling him to go see the clown who's in town and he's like I I am that clown dude. right like like <laughs> I'm making everyone you know like yeah like I mean in some cases it's that it's literally taking off that cloak and going like. 
you know, this is the way I engage with the world, but mm-hmm. I, I, you know, there are parts of me that aren't just blowing shit off and not, you know, not caring. Um, so like I said, and, and now a lot of what, kind of what we've been focusing on exists in the, uh, say the, the PC side, something yes. I, I would actually think is worth touching on yeah. while we're in the, while we're in the player character space, because it, I, I really think it's pertinent to, uh, to DMs is, uh, the call it kind of quintessential joke character mm-hmm. like and and I don't mean a character that that is comedic and but a character that's literally built to be the ass yes. at at the table uh what are your thoughts on that um oh this yeah uh cuz I've played an ass character before um one thing that immediately comes to mind is okay why are you doing short form or long form campaign Right. If you're doing like a one shot, two shot, three oh, shot, yeah. just have yeah. fun. You be, be your be your ass character. If you're doing a long term campaign, and I, the reason why is is is, I feel is as a player character, why are you doing what you're doing? Is it so that you can make everyone like so that you get to enjoy and everyone else at the table gets to enjoy? Like I don't know. When you're an ass character, when I think of an ass character, I'm not like. Bring, they usually don't bring everyone together. Maybe they, I'm trying to think of like a truly ass character. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I. I well, I, I, I'll I'll get into it in a second because as a DM, I, I yeah. certainly I think I think there are some unique challenges with yeah, a player I, who is you know in intent on turning the game as a whole into a joke. Yeah, and I think that's the the it, it, it could come off as very annoying. And then where people who don't really want to sit down with you because of your character and just like, hey, dude, my uh, my great grandpappy who raised me died. And now you're over there poking his eyes with your finger, making jokes like you have totally destroyed this moment for me. You have ruined my game. Thanks, dude. I hope it was worth the laugh. Yeah. Like that's the danger, which uh, so it would. Yeah, my immediate thing is like uh, long form. Uh, you got to be very careful. Yeah. Well, and I, I think, I think you nailed it. I think with regard to what's the motivation and cre- in creating any character, it doesn't have to be a yeah. joke character. I, I'd say the same could be said for like you, you, you've built this character and you've gone. I, I am, you know, I am a brick wall. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what's your motivation in doing that? Like, what's mm-hmm. your I mean, I mean, you don't have to justify it to me. Yeah, I don't. I don't get a. I, I'm not gonna stamp a pass or fail on it. And it, you know, but but I think it's an important introspection for anyone who's making uh, any any kind of character. Yeah. Um. I do think as a as a DM, there can be there can be some unique challenges in the sense that uh, if and it doesn't have to be a joke character, but a, any character that kind of thrives on injecting levity. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say the biggest thing as a DM that I would try to impart on on those players is uh, understanding when levity is not going to improve mm. what's transpiring, which is so hard. It can be tough to do, and especially again, like you said, there's some people who just very naturally it's what they it's what they do. It's how yeah. And and like I said, more often than not, I think levity is a good thing in the mm. game space. But there are absolutely scenarios that can be playing out at the table that. Uh, levity will crumble yeah like it's like so it's important like we were talking about with balance yeah if you know if whatever scenario is playing out and maybe it's very important to another uh player at the table maybe it's important to the party as a whole Mm -hmm. um it really comes down to i think kind of in the same way that as a as a dm you know i'm certainly trying to keep my finger on the pulse if i'm looking around and everyone is very engaged and it's a tense moment um you know, like I need to go. Is is any inkling of levity in this space going? Is that an improvement? Mm-hmm. And and there, I'll say there are many times as a DM, it doesn't matter if you think it is or not. You don't have a lever to pull, right? Or not one right. that does, won't feel tacky and and shoehorned in, and right, just you right. know, it's like and and I'm a, a pretty firm believer in this capacity and in many others that that in in real time. You're, you you shouldn't be instantiating levers to pull just because you really feel like it's going to mm-hmm. be cool to do this right now. Like that's not a that I mean again teach their own on their own style. Mm-hmm. Um, you know there's there's but I I think that there are some unique challenges uh, to to be sitting at a table with someone 
uh, who is tone deaf with the, the way in which they're injecting levity yeah, in the game. That was going to um, be my thing. If you're going to go Joe character and you often get comments that you can't read a room very well and your social intelligence is is pretty low, that might be not the way to go. Just because, like, you, like you're saying, you got it. Like, you almost have to be very uh, nuanced and like it's a, a much harder. And le- if you want to pull it off and be an endearing character, you have to be you have to be really yeah, new, uh, yeah. good at it. And again, I think I, I think that there are there's massive opportunity there. Like I said, there's massive opportunity when things are when things are tense and when things are, mm-hmm. you know, but um, in the exact same way as you're building this narrative collaboratively, as this is unfolding and mm-hmm. emerging at the table, um, m- my initial argument of really the best narrative that could possibly emerge is going to be one that has both. both, mm-hmm. And they will be in some harmony yes and and the second that the second that one of those simply can't exist because you know let's say anytime someone tries to do something to lighten the mood someone cracks down on this isn't a you know this is you know whatever that you you're actively trying to remove levity or the injection of levity Mm -hmm. and vice versa so yeah yeah so well then this is a good i think time to, to to flip the table and talk more about the dm side of things uh because I think because we're talking like you have to be really it's for a joke character as a PC it's very hard to do. I think for a D uh, for a, a DM you should have some total joke characters. Yeah, I mean I think I think that I think that kind of like like I, I was alluding to in the initial kind of the example of things have been really tense. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like. Um, I I really think that part of keeping your finger on the pulse, both for like, hey, are my players enjoying what's going on, or you know, is what has been the you know, and whether that's oh, we've been doing a ton of combat lately, mm-hmm. oh, we've been doing a ton of social interactions lately, oh, we've been you know, whatever it is, like you know, too much of anything is, and and so having your finger on that pulse. The interesting thing, one of the big things that I I wanted to get get your thoughts on is i think that uh, certainly i can in inject entire characters mm-hmm. into you know if you're sitting in a tavern and i want someone to walk in and and i go you know oh this guy's gonna be a real piece of work you know like this you know we need a little a little shot of something maybe the party's sitting kind of morose or uh, you know around nursing their beer and um Fundamentally, I think that there are, you know, a DM is one over however many people in total are at the, they're one eighth or one sixth or one fourth. Um, And I actually, so I'll be curious to hear your thoughts. I actually think that uh, controlling levity on an instance by instance basis, I actually think. I, I might go so far as to say it lives more on the player side of the screen than it doesn't. Now, when you're talking about the entirety of a campaign having a tone, yeah, yeah, a DM is probably more responsible for instantiating that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, and assuming that everyone's kind of signed onto the contract of we all we all agree that this is a tone that sounds enjoyable to to w- move through. Um, but I think kind of in the same way that I outlined, there might be times where I go like, man, this feels really tense, but I'm literally going to have to write something into the game that, that didn't exist in this space. And in rare instances, I may do that, but, Mm -hmm. but I think kind of like you said, there's times where gallows humor might be exactly what's needed. Mm -hmm. And the idea that there should always be a character at the DM's control to inject that. Uh, Cause more often than not now, again, we, anyone who's seen our DMPC conversation knows that I have no I have no qualms with having a long time uh, uh, NPC running with the uh, the party. In fact, Reek in our campaign is a perfect example. Yeah, perfect example. He we're served about. as he was a lot of the levity yeah. in the group, and I actually think that since he passed, it it's pretty fair to say that that. That has been a, a an avenue that has 
dried up to some extent. Yeah, and I think, yeah. I think you have actually done a pretty good job of trying to pick that mantle up. Yeah, but the, um, well, not to go too, but the problem, like, yeah, we kind of became dependent a little bit on Reek because the levity I had was a lot of levity was our interactions, you as Reek and me and Kel. Now that I don't have some that. Of, some of the shenanigans. Yeah, we were yeah. kind of like the, the three stooges just getting written to random stuff from time to time. Now that, yeah. I, like, I don't have that that cohort, cohort, what, cohort? So what's the word? Cohort? Cohort. Cohort. Sure. Sorry, internet. But yeah, I, <laughs> I don't have that Friend. person. <laughs> uh, and so yeah, it's, it, we are like having to re, it's, it's actually prime time this, to talk about this because us in our campaign yep. is like, we're kind of struggling to find levity right now. Yeah. And so yeah, this is a really I, opportune I, thing. I definitely, and, and the thing is, is, I, I mean, again, it's another example. I, I completely agree. I would, if I was looking objectively at it, I would go, I think, and I think, um, there is for a little bit of of context. One of the crew members on the ship uh, um, is a uh, Goliath barbarian uh, who is, I think, only slightly smarter than than Kel. Um, but but you you guys have there's been some opportunity to riff there, and he's he's kind of served as a good uh, uh, a good sounding board for yeah. some levity. But it really is a deal where I think I think it, it can be felt pretty pretty obviously that the the table is yearning yes. for that injection and so here's and this is perfect off of my question is as a player yeah how much do you feel that that mm. you're waiting for me to do something about that and how much do you say i need to do something about and and like i said i'm not saying there's a right or wrong answer yeah. but but i'm 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 kind of thinking about this out mm. loud i actually think that i have the tools at my disposal that exist within a scene. Mm -hmm. But you guys more or less are deciding which where you're going and which scenes are playing out. Right. Yeah. So if yeah, we if there's that. not a tool in 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 my repertoire to to play with. And like I said, you can I mean this is not to say that DMs can't instantiate at any time we want. We can go, <laughs> you know, this weird looking little gnome comes in and, well, and you know he's he's uh you know whatever whatever it is he's doing. But but again Players, I think, can sniff out, yeah. and, and it would feel disingenuous yeah. to just arbitrarily inject some. And the thing is, is I think that hunger, that thirst, that everyone I think can acknowledge is there. Mm -hmm. That is going to be a cold drink of water when you find it, and yeah. I think that's going to almost re, re, instantiate, you know, almost re center the group mm -hmm. as you know so yeah that's talk with me about that oh yeah so it, this real you, you mentioned that was like a, yeah levity and humor can be such a bonding thing mm -hmm. like you can re, it, same thing with gallows humor like soldiers who have gone through the sh stuff together and suddenly they, they don't, get off don't curse on this I'm, I'm not going i'm really trying to stop you, oh, i notice you're not but I, i've done very little <laughs> attempting to stop but anyway so uh when they come back to gals the the bond over it and then um but going back to like okay Okay, going kind of talking about it. Sorry, we're kind of talking more about our games, but uh, we, that that black hole of levity is there, and you're like, hey, should I put someone to fill that black hole? I don't, I don't. It, that's the easy road, because we've already. It'd be super easy, because me and you, obviously, we have a YouTube channel. We riff all the time. We know right. how to do yeah, this. When we're at the table, we. It, it's it's not hard if if the intent is there to generate the levity. Super easy, you know. But but I guess my and my point maybe isn't isn't. It it's more. Everyone at the table is holding a piece of this heavy slab, mm -hmm. and and so, if anyone just signs off as like that's not my my weight to bear, mm -hmm. that tablet falls and cracks on the ground. I mean, I think everybody at the table ha plays some role. Again, characters that are very serious characters yeah. likely play mm -hmm. a lower role. But if they've signed off and gone, that's not my job. Mm -hmm. It's you know again it's like that I that I disagree with it's yeah. everyone's job to try and and find that balance especially when you're hungry for it you know yes and, yes and so I, I uh, but uh, yeah I mean that that's that's more I, I was very curious to hear what your thoughts were on that because I I absolutely in our own in our own game it's this is very prudent timing because yeah. levity is, is uh, there there is I think there I think I think we are feeling the effects of the pendulum being stuck or swinging back very slowly. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, at least, I've been thinking for, for some time now, uh, really pretty much since Reek died, mm -hmm. um, 
what what will that solution look like? And yeah. I and and in that capacity, I don't really think it's you know again as with anything else, my job is to put things into the world, and then mm-hmm. you guys choose mm-hmm. which of those things. You know, if if it means another another uh, the party member yeah. uh, joining you guys, if it means you know, I mean, I, it could mean anything. There's yeah. all sorts of ways to pursue it, but mm-hmm. um, so you know, I, I I think probably I've been as curious as you guys have yeah. in, in that capacity. So. Yeah, well, we'll see how it goes because, uh, like you're saying, we're kind of having to rediscover our party dynamic. Yeah, um, and that is very uh, difficult, and it's also hard because we're also trying to like we're trying to read each other. I feel so. For me, for example, I want to make sure that uh, a drama and, and the story, uh, don't get me wrong, super important, but that's not the focus of D&D for me. Right, I, I right. enjoy uh, the more the, the, the beer and pretzels, because pretzels are still a thing. <laughs> Kind of, you know, that's more my thing, and I don't want to ever get on step on anyone's toes. But I feel like pretzels is going to be the theme of all of season two. I love it. You had, you had, uh, you had Captain Picard as basically, basically the. So is someone gonna, is someone gonna like say pretzels are a bad snack? Some, someone's gonna roast pretzels. Oh, Please, delicious. someone roast pretzels. Oh, just bake just them to the delicious. No, anyway, um, so having to rediscover things, and it's. I think it would be good for our table dynamic to to because, like I'm saying, we will bond over it. So our our party will become so much more cohesive. After we, I I think there's going to be growing pains. I think it's going to be awkward as we go forward, and there's going to be a lot of like feeling things out. And I think that we've seen some growing pains. Like, yes. Uh, We've had the last few sessions have gotten a little little tense, a little choppy yeah. waters. And and again, I think a lot of that is manifestations of, of exactly what you're talking about, those growing pains, but also the fatigue of um the fatigue of seriousness, right. of tension. So of, yeah, the pendulum some just flo- swung too far into the drama side of the the Right. And I think now being back, you know, now that you're back with uh, the ship and the ship, and there's kind of just a broader array of of entities that you're familiar with, and mm-hmm. you know, and and um, you know, you were just kind of in a in a segment of the campaign that really, uh, really, frankly, didn't lend itself to me injecting a lot of anything by way of you know, I mean, there was there was the native tribe with a language barrier that yeah, you guys right. were. There was, uh, you know, I mean, it, like I, I don't need to go into all of the, but but it was just, it, you know, if you were on a city street corner, mm-hmm. you could be like, uh, do I see anyone who just looks like a good dude? And I'd be like, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you see about eight of them. Like, in fact, like one of them's waving at you right now. He's got a cool oh, light. <laughs> he's, you know, he's, uh, he's, uh, you know, so what? You know, you, I'd I'd walk up to him in a second. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, but uh, jokes on you. He's got a multi-level marketing scheme that he's uh, really pushing. Yeah, it's, dude, those uh, MLMs, they got MLMs. Yeah, they'll get you. But um, so going, uh, refocusing a little bit. Um, do you? So two sets. You set the tone, but who sets the tone? Is it a fifty-fifty? Well, I think if you're talking about the campaign, I think I think the tone is more or less set when you're kind of session zeroing and 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 just kind of as I mean as people are creating character. Well, I'd say that like if you brought to me a character named you know Winkle von Schlumpenstein or whatever his oh, name. Oh, that's was. my next character's <laughs> name, Winkle and, von Schlumpenstein. And and you know and it's like yeah, well he was he was raised by badgers, but <laughs> hairless badgers, so he actually doesn't realize he was raised by bad. And I'm already going like. You have a certain idea about what the tone of this campaign is, <laughs> and and that it may be the right idea. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. um, but so there, that's a big part of it. You know, right. I mean, like even if you haven't had the overt discussion of, hey, what's this tone? It's right. like, you know, I, I think that's a big part of it. But I think on a so and I, and I think in that regard, oftentimes when a group comes together, because it's often a DM organizing it, that DM's already gone. I've got an idea for a campaign. Mm-hmm. I need to find some players now. Yep. So at that point, the DM, you know, it's the players would be negotiating the DM off of that tone, right? And and probably they they will. I mean, like if if you're saying like I've got this idea, maybe everyone goes, I sign on wholeheartedly. That sounds awesome. Maybe they go like, Yeah, I don't, you know, want to th- be Winkle von Schlumperstein. And and at which point you go like, This isn't the right table for you, <laughs> sir. Um, no, but, but my hairless badger, <laughs> they're awesome. 
<laughs> Sorry uh, to run with that forever. That is going to be my next character. Oh my goodness, it's. Uh, I'm, <laughs> but uh, I've done irreparable damage. Yeah. So, so like 50 50 almost and like I, I'm well i think hard. again i think early on probably the dm tries to instantiate that tone and it's tempered by the players okay. that he finds that the play sense. there but i think on a session by session basis mm-hmm. uh that's gonna be my next question really comes down to uh, from uh, this, this again i think a, every dm might have a different take on this i think it really comes down to what tools do I organically have? What levers do I organically have to pull mm-hmm. to modify tone, to play with pace, to do? I mean, there's a bunch of different ways I think you can uh, uh, impact it. Mm-hmm. And I think that there are environments in which you have tons. And if yeah. I, again, if if you're sitting in the middle of a tavern yeah, and I go like, so many levers, man, these guys are like, they're, they're, like, what are they doing? They're just sitting there. They're moping around. You know, it's like, I get it. You loved him. He's dead. It's no, <laughs> whatever. You know, like, what? Like, get <laughs> over it. it We've got two minutes to ago. roll. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but, and, and so it might be the perfect time to go, like, you know what? I've I've had this NPC. I actually thought he was going to be over at this tavern over right. here. I you know I love I love kind of what he could bring to this scene. Mm-hmm. There's no reason he can't exist here. Mm-hmm. That. Could, are you guys going to possibly know I didn't intend for him to be in a separate? No. Mm-hmm. If you're in the middle of the forest, sitting around a campfire, and suddenly, again, some weird goofball character shows up, yeah, is it going to feel like I'm reaching arbitrarily into the game? Probably. And I would rather elongate tension that I would I would prefer to disrupt. Yeah. I'd rather let it stand mm-hmm. than, than something smell a little fishy and be like, you know, because again, it's like like that's the that's the non dice roll version of fudging rolls. Right. It's like you know, yeah. you you're, you you guys have decided to be in an environment where I don't have a lot I can do right here in mm-hmm. terms of easy levers to pull. That's to to some extent, I'm robbing your, you know, your. It, it would be the exact same if you're sitting in that tavern and you go like. Uh, you know, you described it as a jovial tavern. The 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 there's a minstrel playing, and it's like you know, like I'm gonna lighten the mood. Like I'm gonna go request a song from the minstrel, and right. I go like, oh, actually, he just packed up his set. In fact, a lot of people are leaving the tavern now. Kind of, really, the tone's really coming down. It's like that's me artificially injecting, right. like uh, elongating the tension, and and it would you'd be like, what? Well, well, where are they going? Can I ask someone where they're going? Right, it's like, yeah. oh, they're tired. They're just going home. Yeah, it's like, well, I mean, cool. Maybe, maybe there's something they are actually going to do something interesting, and there's good reason for them to be leaving. Right. But that wouldn't be me doing it arbitrarily. There's right. a, there's a good, you know. So that I guess to me, the the answer to that question is is I want the players to have first crack at anything. I, I you know, well, I, well, I thanks. Don't, I want you guys to solve the puzzle before I've given you any clues. But I just want to click want... the help button and <laughs> to a, solve it for me. A little paper clip. <laughs> I see you're trying to solve a puzzle from a second grade textbook. <laughs> I can't figure it out. <laughs> I don't get it. There's too many you colors. Push the big red button. <laughs> there's there's, I there's don't one understand. button. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so so it's. I mean, it's exactly that. With anything else, can we talked about in the exploration episode? Mm-hmm. It feels so much better to find the clue because you were exploring. Yeah. Than for me to be like, you see a series, uh, a very well laid trail, equally spaced of Reese's pieces, <laughs> leading to a large hamper with a stick propping it up. <laughs> like you know, it's like you you it, it, you didn't even have to look for it. Right. I basically just shoved it into right, your face. Right. 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 And I think the same goes for tone to mm-hmm. some extent. I mean, yeah. there are times where I go like. I I think I should do something, mm-hmm. and yes, I've got a good lever to pull. I think I will do something. Yeah, but I want I don't want I don't want it to be a uh, you know a, an ex machina kind of thing where you guys are down. Mm-hmm. Tension is too high. We need to a, bl- a blow off valve, and I give it to you every time. Like that's that doesn't. And you're solving our you know, problems for be, us, yeah. and we don't get to grow as party as a party. Yeah. And I mean, it would be the exact same thing. You're losing a combat. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, a dragon roars overhead, and all the enemies flee. It's like it's pretty obvious we were going to die there, and right. I'm pretty sure you just saved us. Like right. that's not that doesn't feel good as as no. players. Um, again, I think it's a far more subtle thing to be able to inject some. 
Uh, and for that same reason, I think that there's all sorts of, especially in a long form game, dreams. There, there's characters that are long gone that you can exist in a space yeah. with in dreams, in visions, in memories, in you know, in some cases, a player that's just sitting up around the fire, going like, you know, I want to sit up and I'm just, I'm just kind of thinking about my dad, and mm-hmm. go. Well, what what are you thinking about? Do you have a specific memory? Mm -hmm. And as they begin to describe that, we can fall into that space. And that's a huge amount of levity. If if you've just, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's really just you, but the rest of the table witnessing that feels that Mm, too. So, but again, I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't, if you told me that, you organically created that sequence. You said, Mm -hmm. I'm, this is what I'm thinking about. This is what's going on in my head. Uh, That's, you know, you've, you have kind of started down that slope, and then it becomes really easy for me to go. This could be a cool moment, and mm-hmm. it's a great way to bring some levity to the situation. Yeah. Um, but it would feel it, it. I'm not necessarily bad, but it might not feel as organic if I just shoved that on yeah. you, and then yeah. and and especially if I shoved it on you all the time. Like right. oh, every time you're clearly feeling down, I go like you know, you know, you look up and you actually you see you see a. a just a, a nice a balloon is just you know like it's suddenly you, you smile your, your heart your heart yeah. just warms a little and well uh, let me throw this out here as a question um, about consistency mm-hmm. uh, so coming to how important is it to come like so for instance throwing our campaign out there is super serious right now uh, it's almost like how do you even get how do you start injecting humor into this super serious game space. Like, do you just start nitpicking at it? Do you like die? You just bomb it? Like, you know, you know what? I'm in a good mood today. I'm gonna let Kel be in a good mood today, and just we're gonna start going that way. Well, I think what you just did as a as a player, mm-hmm. not as a character, is what you need to do as a character. I mean, this is this would be my two cents. I think there's times that a player just needs to vocalize, "Hey guys, we got metaphorically kicked in the balls." Mm-hmm. You know. Things are shit right now. I mean, one thing is just acknowledging and coming to the consensus that things are not good. Mm-hmm. Do can we all agree that this doesn't feel good? This yeah. doesn't it, as a character saying that and going like that stops now. Okay. I mean, if you're a character who who like I mean, like if you're the brooding uh emo rogue who's who hasn't said a single it could be a big pivotal moment for your character, I guess, but but you know, if it makes sense for your character, I mean, I think there are times that articulating like you know, this is bad. Well, and I'll I'll, I'll use Kel as an example. Mm-hmm. Kel is no stranger to to sitting with morose right. shit kicked out of them people. Yep. I mean, he's you know, and and so I guess I would ask you, what would Kel say to his men after after taking serious losses? What would that to me is kind of the 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 thought process. And and right. if if it was Amanda sitting in that chair, obviously I don't have that same reference, but I could right. go well. You probably you had some really rough times with your brother when you were growing up. Mm-hmm. You know, how did you make when, your brother when, laugh when he didn't eat how, for three days? What, or what something did that, like that? Yeah, what did that look like? Mm-hmm. What you mm-hmm. know? And and then I think because then I think it's a matter of these are probably thoughts that actually are going through your character's head when mm-hmm. things are bad. You take time to yourself. You're mm-hmm. doing your thing, I like and you and you start going, you know, this is bad, but I can I can make this better. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, Kel, I, by and large, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but tends to be a. Uh, or at least by his his uh, history, his backstory mm-hmm. in these things, a I'm I'm going to solve that problem. I, I, if if I can't outright solve it, I can mm-hmm. make it better. When it comes to his men, his 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 unit, and I guess that would be that would be my thought. And that, for some characters, that's very hard to do because yeah. of the type of character that they are. Um, I think uh, you know I think realistically, uh, everyone at our table. Probably, I would say Aster has the hardest the hardest road in that regard. Mm-hmm. But she's also probably closest in proximity to the drama and trauma that has recently transpired. Yeah, yeah. So she's really the one who probably needs the, the uplifting, uplifting up, yes, rather than being the one to listen. Well, again, some I think some characters that have built levity into their character, that's precisely how they deal with being the one closest to to mm-hmm. drama and and trauma is. They have to make a joke out of it. They yeah. have to lift everyone up around them, even if even if they're still, you know, reeling inside. Yep, yep. yep. So I, I think a lot of times just being explicit about it. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, not. 
that that's my two cents, and that's shit literally off the cuff. Just yeah, no, no, now, I was but, just, yeah. But so I, 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 we we have been very much in our own campaign in this yeah, episode. Sorry, so guys. I, 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 I think a lot of uh, a lot of what we're talking about, I hope is, is translating. I mean, this is what we do. We just have conversations about D and D (laughs) and so much of this is so pertinent to exactly where we're at now. Mm -hmm. Um, and in many regards, I would also say this, this maps pretty well to the conversation we're having now to, if outside of split screen D and D you were to say, Hey man, things feel really tense right now. Let's have a conversation about that. Mm -hmm. This, this might be something akin to what that conversation would Maybe. be. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. it would be even more drilled into yeah. our thing. Right, right, um, right. But so I, I'd be curious to know, like, what is your what are your thoughts on that advice? Is that like stay behind the DM screen? That advice no. fucking sucks. <laughs> or or like you know like like it, no. I, mean, I, I, I what what are your thoughts on that? Well, no, really I, I like it because uh, again. I think we're. I think we, this is a, a not a uniquely five e, but I think five e tables will counter this more than a lot of other, just because the system that ha- the culture that's it, it happened around the game is just really pushing the narrative, really pushing the drama, where we're trying to create these things and we're comparing ourselves to literal professional voice actors in a lot of cases, or some no comparison. No comparison. <laughs> yeah, there is no comparison. We, there's no way we'll ever get close to what they can do. Um, well, we, we try and hopefully have some good moments. But um, long story short, there is. I think this is a much. I don't know. I you you have your your thumb or fin- fingers. I forget what fingers uh, on the on the pulse of the D and D world. But it feels like drama is really a big thing. So I think this is definitely will be pertinent to hope, uh, some groups. But as far as your advice that you. That you gave, I think that's wonderful. The thing I like about it is you yeah, is an organic solution. Mm. It's a you know I hate the phrase, uh, but what would my character do, you know? And using that to address the problem in game. So you know that's a kind of a beautiful way to do it. I, should you guys talk as a group outside of the game? I think that's uh, I don't oh, see a problem with that I, at all. I mean, uh, I would I would say actually a lot of. That's that's a great pivot, uh, and I know we probably don't have that much time, but it's a great pivot. Yeah, okay. and, and and just in the nick of time, I think. I think. A lot of, a lot of. Levity can be injected into the, into, what's happening at the. It's a it's a, a weird violation of player character knowledge, but but kind of not not in any way that does any harm. Literally, just as a table being like. Man, those were some those were some tense sessions. Like, we should all just go get a beer, right? <laughs> you know, like, we should just as players blow off some steam together. Right. I I absolutely think that there's some, uh, and and I mean whether it's just blowing off some steam or actually hashing some stuff out that is that is driving tension within the game. Though you know, at one hundred percent. We I mean it's it it shouldn't have taken this long to come up. I think no, so, yeah, I'm yeah. so good on you. Um, but yeah, I, I think, did something I think, good. And I and I think I think the same goes. You know, in a lot of cases. Those conversations might well be uh, uh, taking place, but uh, amongst players, um, you know, if if that's the the broader feeling, kind of like I said, I think I think one hundred percent this conversation has has served a, a nice proxy by timing mm-hmm. because I think that, um, you know, tone tone is one of those things that. The DM should be aware. If, like I said, I I would completely agree. I, you know, like it, it would be a problem if I was like, "What are you talking about? The tone's been awesome, man." It's like, and then like we we've just, disagree. Yeah, clearly, be clearly, bad. we would be in a space where where I have not been reading the table as well mm-hmm. as as um, I should be. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think that that's um, one last thing I wanted to say, and I know I keep pivoting to yeah. to uh, Kel specifically, but but specifically with with in the context of of overcoming tension or yeah. injecting levity uh is with regard to addressing it as a as a very just explicit thing he's not a very intelligent and i think he tends to handle problems as just a head on yeah. like he doesn't like he doesn't play games he just right. you know and so even i was thinking more and more cuz i was really just giving i was saying that off the cuff right, right, but the right. more i think about it the more i i was thinking like yeah i think i think like if i mean if that were playing out at the table i would be going like this feels very Kel to me. Like yeah. he's just going no nonsense, you know, 
we, yeah. we got to wash our hands of this. We got we got work to do. We got you know, like you get over here, you get over here, make out a little bit while I watch, and then let's get you know, let's get into you know, uh, whatever. Wow. <laughs> let's see. Let's hope. Let's see if our wives watch this one here. That's, that, 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 I, they are hanging on our every word. Don't 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 you know how their relationship with this channel? Um, um, well, um, so uh, yeah, I yeah. think that's an. I, I don't know. Yeah, I won't go into it because actually, I don't know because the way the way we left things with the relationship between the party members, I don't know if that's the way Kel would do it. Well, in this exact moment, maybe not. But yeah. I'm just saying, in, in, in general, broadly speaking, yes. Kel seems to take things head on. Yes, and, that's how he and handles. doesn't have the doesn't necessarily have the the uh the sense to 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 navigate the social nuance that someone right. someone like Katarina might might really take tact in right. in doing maybe not it just i mean it's hard to say but it, it certainly to me wouldn't read out of character yeah, to like, to you know to come in that but i would say even even given as disgruntled as kel is in the moment i would still say probably probably his pool of comparison for when his team, his unit, his men, his, uh, you know, uh, when they've been down, when they've, you know, when they've really been, been the, on the losing end of things, mm -hmm. presumably that's his broadest pool to draw from with regard yeah. to how do I fix this? Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, that's, I mean, obviously that those decisions ultimately are yours, but but when I think about the world is mine. Oh, sorry. Oh. No, we're not doing we're no. <laughs> <laughs> I said it too early. No, it's all over. Anyway, um, no. I mean, I, I and I like I said, I I really know that we were kind of in in the weeds a little bit on this and 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 honed in on, think, on yeah, a I little think bit more to a tone um, conversation than a, uh, Joe conversation. Yeah, but I, but I think I really think that everything we've been talking about is precisely why you shouldn't lose sight of okay. how important. Uh, that levity is, yeah. and and again, and for the same reason why, I really think that again that the 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 responsibility of finding that tonal balance, mm -hmm. uh, everybody at the table is carrying some amount yeah, of weight, 100%. some more than others based on their characters, yep. based on their role at the table, um, but, um, yeah, I don't think I mean you could be the most serious character in some cases pushing pushing that seriousness. To a certain extent, mm -hmm. becomes comedic. I mean, like like a character who, you know, can't uh, can't uh, comprehend sarcasm, takes mm -hmm. everything at face value, yeah. and just you know, a lot of a lot of comedic moments can play that. And even the the relationship between a character that is not that that is much more jovial. Riffing with the character right. that can't even can't you know doesn't, doesn't understand, even understand a with. joke. Yeah, you know those can be some very so, you know don't don't think that that you are absolved of your responsibility. Yeah. at the table, I think of of finding that balance, and that can be pushing it in either direction. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, regardless of which side of the screen you're sitting yep. on. Agree. Uh, what do you want? What do you want to hear down in the comments? This is an interesting one for ooh. for comments. It is. Um, has there been a time? Mm, I, I kind of want to hear about Joe characters. I'm not gonna lie, because that's a guilty pleasure. I like Joe characters. So Sweet. if you've ever, have you seen a Joe character being pulled off successfully? Because I think there's, you know, that's uh, that's a question. But um, I want to hear what 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 is your like? How much jovial? Uh, levity do you have at your game and how much drama would you say oh, yeah, you yeah, run yeah. like I'd, a really drama I'd heavy love, game i'd love to hear it like give it a like a percentage split of the yeah. game you're actually playing like you know is it a pretty shuck down 50 50 balance mm -hmm. is it uh you know is it a more serious tone with little spottings of levity is it more joking around mm -hmm. and um with the occasional you know big important moment you know that that people kind of pare down for mm -hmm. I, I love that. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I, I'd really like to get, uh, and maybe I'll even throw a poll out on that. I, oh, because we can do that now thanks to you guys. I know. You guys are the shit. You are the stuff. Yep. Don't listen, don't listen to him. <laughs> don't listen to him. Uh, How do you want to sign this we, one off? We, did, we got signed off by Raid Shadow Legends that we can <gasps> curse as much as we want. So, so uh, no. Really? No. But at some point. Oh, uh, I was hoping to be able to buy meat this week. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. nope. It's potatoes for you, boy. Dang it. 
Um, I love potatoes. No, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think let's. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I don't again. This this one really got me off balance. I gotta mm-hmm. say that much. I mean, like it it was a fun conversation and it was very pertinent, but uh, it uh, it's got me a little discombobulated. I'll I'll mm. I'll admit it. So I'll tell you what. Give me give me two and like you know okay. give them nice and spiffy. Give me. Uh, and you can do them whatever order you want. Okay. Give me a serious, tense. Things are weighing on this party. The world is yours. Okay. And give me a the world is yours. Uh, that uh, that that may may well bring some levity to that uh, that mood. Do you think you can hammer out? Two I think I can. I think I got two. Right. Right. So uh, we'll see, go let's serious. See, let's see, we'll see, what we'll see, let's see what we got here. <laughs> I think we're gonna die down here. I think we've been trapped down here. And look at look at Steve. I can't do it. I'm st- <laughs> this poor Steve. He was so young, and now he doesn't have his, his pinkies. The world will never be his. Wait, this is this is the joke one or That's this? <laughs> my joke one. All right. Hi, buddy. How's how's it going? I'm I'm doing good. I'm you, doing all right. You, you, would you like to hear a joke? No, I'd actually rather not. How, how do how do cows do math? How? With a calculator. The world is yours. <laughs> <laughs>